Okay, we're live. Oh, wow. Hi, everybody. Yes, Melody just walked in to um, her guest room where I'm staying. We call this Sheila's room. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I do in the morning when I wake up. Usually I do it right away with the covers, but I'm going to undo the covers so that you can see what I'm doing. So I have not gotten out of bed yet, right? And I start out by straightening out my body and, you know, kind of looking up and making sure I'm straight. I put my hands just on my hips and I start to point and flex and point and flex and point and flex. And then I'll add the breath and I'll inhale when I point and I'll exhale when I flex. So. Just keep doing this any amount. If it's difficult for you, know you're you may not point as much as I do. You may go here. Whatever you can do is worthy. Please don't say, Oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can move any amount, even if it's just a tiny, tiny bit. Getting the movement, getting your head to connect all the way to your feet, making your neurological body talk to each other. And this pumping of the ankles like this, this pumping of the feet is awakening the lymphatic fluid in the body, okay? It's waking everything up naturally and relaxing through it. So, and I like to do that until I feel, you get more and more aware and I feel it move up my entire body. Then next, I like to roll my ankles. And again, any amount. Uh, breathe with it, just deep, nice breaths. Here, I'm, I'm wanting to wiggle my toes. So wiggle your toes whenever you want to. And then go the other way. Oh, and I see lots of snap, crackle, pops. That's right ankle feels a lot. So I'm listening to my body and I'm feeling how I feel and what's going to happen for my circulation that's getting awakened in my body. And again, any amount. And then you may want to go opposite ways because when we change the ways that we move the ankles, it wakens the brain even more and gets the neurotransmitters to fire and all the things that we have to our thinking brain to connect but that full neurological health you have to think about like okay i'm going to move them separate i'm going to move them together you think you don't have to think about it but you you are subconsciously in any amount, not to the point where it's too much for you. I do this a lot. And then these are windshield wipers. And I spread my legs a little bit more so that I get a full range of motion in my head. If you've had a hip replacement or something like that, you have to be careful with things like this. So you have to know your own body and what you can do and what you can't and how much you can move. You may be like this. But if you can get the full range, go for it. And again, you can add the breath, inhale out, exhale in. Now relax during this. It's not rushed. Now I just be here for a minute and I'm just gonna notice where my breath is and the rise and fall of my belly for a moment. So when I breathe in, the belly rises, and when I breathe out, the belly falls. Now 
coming away up the knees very gently. So any amount, just drag the foot on the bed and then lengthen it back out. And drag the other foot and lengthen it back out. Oh, this left calf is really tight. I can feel it. So I know already that when I wake up, literally I'm awake, but when I get out of bed, this left leg is where my restrictions are, and I'm blessing my calf right now, telling it just to relax as I'm mimicking walking here, but it's very little movement. I'm not picking up my leg. I'm not activating a lot of muscle. I'm just moving that knee joint, and again, any amount. get more in, um, connected with this, you can add the breath, inhale when you're extended, and exhale when you bend. So I just have a nice little push right there. And then for some of you that want a little more, you do not have to go here, you can actually pick it up and bring it in and out. And I like to use it without my arms and just let my legs move. Not doing a lot of tugging it in and all that kind of thing. But you can do this. I honestly don't go this far every day. I usually just drag the foot if <laughs> it feels good. So but you can take it here. But always make sure you do both sides equal. And then I may go like this. And then I may use a pillow to put there. Pillows are nice and support because this is a nice posture. We call this toddler's pose and this is so nice to um, help the digestion and that means either way constipation or IBS either side of that you can just relax here and breathe and again find your belly breath. And as you're here, I'm pretty tense today because we've been doing a lot this week. And I'm noticing that I'm holding on to my hips. So I want to pay attention. Am I holding on or can I completely let go of my body? So digestion is one of the most important things. You know, our digestive system, our colon down here is um, our second brain, we call it. So I like to stay like this, but then I will utilize my hands and I will close my hands in a fist and open them. And close and open. And you can add the breath here that you extend, inhale and exhale. And again, I don't take this for granted. I teach a lot of people these movements and in any amount, if you're here and your hands are swollen or stiff or feeling that inflammation, just allow the movement to any amount. And then ah, rolling. Now it takes a lot of the brain to go the same way. So you can kind of play just like we did with the feet. Notice it's, it's a little bit challenging to go the exact same direction with your wrists. So you know what areas of the body you need to move the most. It's much easier to go like this and like this. But you know which ones you need to move. For me, I go all the way up the body. Inhale, extend the arm. Exhale, bring them in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bring them in. And if it's too much for you to be in toddler's pose, you can be laying with your legs straight or with a pillow underneath them. You could just be here. Or if you don't want to have pillows or someone next to you is still asleep, you can do 
constructive rest, which your feet are apart and your knees are together resting there. And I like to be in that one when I go like this. I take my arms out to a T and then I bring them across to my back. Exhale. Bring them out. rest here. Sometimes I may fall back asleep. I want to take this rest. But this is meditative movement for me. For some of you are like, I hate those people are coming in on me. I have to jump out of bed. You know what? I did all that when my kids were little, right? And so depending on where you are in life of what you can do with this, but I set my alarm. I have that setting on my iPhone that's really gentle to wake me up. And when I set my alarm, I hit the snooze. The snooze is eight minutes, and I start doing my movements. It's a very little amount. It's only eight minutes, right? So when you think of that. Now, I will also, you've heard me say I believe that there's food in our palms, right? To bring comfort and support. I will rub my hands together and I will just set my hands on my body and I will call in divine energy and the heat of my hands and just start at my head moving down the body. And you can stay in different areas or you can move through the area. Giving yourself your own touch. We need touch. We need love. We need support. And looking outside ourselves for all of that can get frustrating and gives us expectations. And it's good not to have expectations and just come into a place of appreciation and appreciating your connection to a divine source and appreciating your connection to self, to yourself. Maybe saying your affirmations, I am enough, I am worthy, I can, I touch, I feel, I breathe, I stay, I don't have to move too quickly, I stay, and I love. Some of you are like, yeah, well, wow, she does all this. This has become a, this is a journey, right? This is, I've been doing things like this. I started probably 20 years ago, or maybe my whole life, I desired this. And now, yes, it has come simply because I practice it. I, I, I walk my talk, and I practice it. So when you get to a point where you can't touch anymore, you just envision your hand to the body again. So I envision that energy moving even though my hand is cold. And now I'm just going to put up my hand. And I put up my ankles, and I'm holding my feet, and I envision myself like that little baby that can touch their feet <laughs> and hold their feet, breathe. And I all of a sudden felt something, and I was like, oh, i got to move my fingers again. So listen to your body and go back to any movement that you need that your body tells you to. And you know, it's coming to me tonight. I will show what I do before bed. It's, a, it's so common to me now that I don't think about it. And being with Melody and just listening to many of you last night on the Zoom call, I, I realized how important it is to share this. So tonight... Before I go to bed, I'll share a little bit of what I do because it's important to, to share, I'm realizing. So one of the most important things, and we may have to walk this way to show this, is how to get out of bed. So you want to bend your knees in and how to get up from a place 
So whenever I have the opportunity, I always reach my ankles and my toes. And, um, you know, I've been to a place where it's been hard to walk and when I've been very challenged. And so there's always a self-care movement for me so that I don't get in that place again. But to, to get out of bed, we want to roll over. So we want to roll over on our side and be in fetal position and pause. Take a breath and enjoy that you can be laying on your side. So depending on which side, so some people are challenged on one side or another, you need to sleep on the side of the bed that you can get up on the side that, that is okay for you. So if you cannot roll over onto your right side, or le like I'm on my left side, if you cannot roll over onto your left side, then sleep on the side of the bed that you're on your left side, on your right side. Excuse me. But then you use your hand in front to lift up and use both hands, letting your head and neck be the last thing to come up. Let your feet dangle. Notice you're not like just popping up. You're slowly coming up to start the day, sitting there and feeling what it feels like to be on the edge of the bed. And I have a book called Rise and Shine, the Six Master Steps to Get Moving. It's on Amazon. You can find it. Um, Rise and Shine, Six Master Steps to Get Moving. I'll put a link to it in the description. Okay. I have that book. <laughs> and there's morning routine in there that's different than this one. Um, I wrote that book um, and I put my um, other way of doing my morning. And then as I've come into it, you know, different challenges in life, my morning routine has shifted. So that other morning routine in my book is great. It's just more active. Um, but one thing out of there that I do, uh, I tap and I do, this is called Tarzan bump. And it feels really good to stimulate the immune system. And you do this, uh, you do this, you feel that vibration. Okay, so that I always do, and then I do the four thumbs. And so underneath the cheeks, this is the stomach meridian. You're like, what's a meridian? An energy um, line in your body. And then from there here, K27 points. Ah, this opens up the neurological body and the, the communication. It just feels good, and you'll feel yourself wanting to breathe. And then underneath the spleen and thymus. And I'm closing my fist and opening it. <sighs> Woo! Now I'm invigorated. Like it, it wakes you up. And then taking that first step down in the morning is so much better. And I may pop my feet again and move. And it's so much better to take your first steps. And you feel more ready. All right? So that's where I'm going to end today, but there's more movements in my book, and you know, who knows how many of these little videos I can do, but I don't have Melanie to film me all the time, so. Now, we had a few comments during. Oh, okay. One was a good one, Susan, California. She's at the gym, and she says, I'm at the gym, and now I know I should have stayed in bed. <laughs> that's funny. And do this before you go to the gym, because you'll be so much ready. You're, you're cells and your muscles and everything well we can we you there. sound so much more awake than you did at the beginning of the video well i am i'm ready to get up now because uh, i did all that and janice says if she, this was at the very beginning when you're doing your feet yeah she said if she did that she'd get cramps okay i agree with you and guess what that is in my opinion i'm not a doctor i'm not prescribing anything but in my opinion when you get leg cramps you are lacking nutrients. You are lacking minerals. So you need to find a really good source of minerals. And I'm not talking about just vitamin and mineral capsule. I'm talking about a really good source of trace minerals. And you have to feed your body more during the day. Okay? Magnesium. Most of us are deficient in magnesium. And that can help. That's an easy start to do Epsom salt baths with two cups of Epsom salt, magnesium, do not get the type that has lavender scent or whatever. Those are fake scents in there. Use your Young Living Essential Oils to add 
to your Epsom salts that you know are a good source of essential oils. So um, that's a good way to begin, but also um, getting liquid trace minerals in your diet. And if you need more help with that, call my 1-800 number, 888-522-1957. And I can talk to you about some different, um, give you some brand sources to I'm look at. I'm thinking into. it's 1927. Oh, is geez, it? I've been saying 1957. Is it? It's one of those. We'll post we'll it. We'll post it. <laughs> yeah. So look at it. But that, I've had a lot of that myself, and I've had to up my nutrients. So awesome. any other questions? I don't think so. Okay. Thanks for waking me? up for me. I don't even know what I look like. I'm in the raw. <laughs> in the raw. <laughs> Have a great morning. Rise and shine to start your day. Bye, guys. Bye. They're asking, can we call after this week is over? Uh, yes. Yes. It's an ongoing number. <laughs>